Hey folks, it's Min, Min Lekong of the Farm blog, pre hospital Retrieval Medicine. Welcome back to the farm. Um, I got a, I saw a tweet from Andy Neal, Dr. Andy Neal, who uh, runs the Emergency Medicine Island blog, um, and he was asking whether um, anyone had any advice about using the Oxylog 3000 in non-invasive ventilation mode. Um, this is something that uh, we do a fair bit in my service. Um, and I've written a number of the protocols as well as uh, uh, teach on uh, our, our aeromedical program about this. So I thought I'd try to put together a quick uh, screencast of uh, some, some uh, pointers and see if we can help uh, Andy out. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just give you a couple of uh, basic uh, non-invasive ventilation resources for the Oxylog 3000. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is um, go to life in the fast lane. So you know that um, they've got a great new uh, training resource here called Borrow the Oxylog 3000. It's the latest uh, article um, and it's by uh, Dr. Joe Deverell, an emergency medicine physician on the Sunshine Coast. So there's Joe there. Thank you, Joe. It's a fantastic, um, fantastic little uh, YouTube video here on uh, assembling the Oxylog, how to turn it on, how to uh, put the basic settings. Uh, it's a really great resource. I'd recommend to that. The next resource I'd recommend is um, uh, Dr. Casey Parker of Broom Docs uh, on NIV thoughts and tips. So it's uh, just a nice little um, clinical pearls on uh, using non-invasive ventilation in emergency practice. Um, that's a really great one I can recommend. And then the last one is Dr. Seth Truger um, of uh, Washington DC. Uh, he runs a little blog, mdaware.org, and he, he wrote a short little article called Selling Ice Cream in the Desert with some great little um, uh, clinical pearls and tips about uh, how you can make non-invasive ventilation successful for you and the patient and how you can titrate it up here. Um, so I'd recommend that. Um, now, to, uh, you, you can all uh, practice this. You can uh, uh, how to set up the Oxylog 3000 um, for uh, non-invasive uh, non ventilation. You obviously uh, need a device. This is the Draeger website and uh, you can go to it and go to Oxylog 3000 Plus Trainer and it gives a nice little simulation here. So uh, what we can do is we can go to that. Um, and this is the Oxylog 3000 Plus, its latest uh, series device. Uh, most uh, folks still have the Oxylog 3000, but it's pretty much the same thing with just a few uh, differences. But uh, the non-invasive mode is essentially the same uh, between the two units of 3000 and 3000 plus. So you obviously uh, connect it all up, get the oxygen hose and the ventilator circuit out, as well as the non-invasive mask. You can use whatever mask you've got, um, and you do the basics like Dr. Joe Deverell uh, mentioned in his um, in his uh, YouTube video on life in the fast lane. Uh, you're going to turn it on. So it does a little quick test. Yes, you select that. It's an adult hose. We're uh, doing non-invasive on an adult. And uh, it automatically actually goes to the SIMV mode. Um, but I've just uh, set this up before, so I've, uh, it went to the CPAP spontaneous mode. So you need to select the spontaneous mode to do non-invasive ventilation. You, you, you technically can um, set it up to do it with this mode and this mode and dial the rate to zero but th this is really the specific mode the machine has for spontaneously breathing patients so um, so I'm just going to talk about that but there are ways you can set it up in those other modes but but this is probably the simplest for those who've never done it before so you need to activate that um, and have that there and um, uh, you can see it comes up with um, a PEEP automatically a 5 and a pressure support or uh, in some models they call it assisted spontaneous breath but it's essentially a pressure support um, and it's set automatically at 0. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, you can It's currently set at an FiO2 of uh, 40. Uh, you can change that obviously, you know, you can dial it up to uh, uh, 100% um, and that will slowly come up. Um, and when it's in spontaneous mode, these dials don't do anything, okay? Uh, well, actually, that dial does does alarm. Uh, so it's, it's obviously the Pmax, so that's the, the, the pressure limit setting, uh, and it's set at 40 at the moment, so it's got a, it'll trigger an alarm and 
uh, prevent it um, um, prevent gas flow going above 40 uh, a millibar whereas so in spontaneous mode these dials tidal volume respirate don't do anything because it's a spontaneously breathing mode now to change the peep say you just want to do CPAP uh, you click on the knob to select that and then you you just dial it up now it, it, it it'll go it'll get to 10 and then it'll get to a, a warning and then you just turn that off um, and sorry we'll do that again so select it uh, go to there 10 and then what you do there is you uh, click on that again to say yes I want to go higher and then you dial it up and it'll go up to a maximum of 20 of peep um, of millibar of peep okay now say you wanted to add in some pressure support so what you need to do is um, rotate the selector knob down to pressure support um, and you can now start dialing that up and that'll go up to the maximum uh, 35 okay now the other thing you should do uh, it's good good practice is to go to the setting page and okay so NIV is on you make sure that that's on okay so that automatically did that because I, I selected the pressure support so when pressure supports activated it's usually automatically uh, puts on NIV but but just make sure that that's on okay and and what that NIV setting does is it actually helps compensate for any mass leak so it turns on a little turbine within the device so that if it senses uh, a leak a, a loss of pressure within the system it'll actually put in extra flow of gas to try to compensate for that leak so that that helps um, and, and that's pretty much it and uh, you obviously put the patient on um, and um, what we're going to show you next um, is just some clinical videos where, where patients are um, having the therapy um, so this is uh, one patient that um, that we uh, gave CPAP to um, and here we go I'm just going to get a rec recording yeah. Okay, so this is a shot of the Oxylog, this is the older model, but um, it's on CPAP, assisted spontaneous breath or pressure support, NIV functions on, see a reasonable minute volume there, 21.9, because the patient's quite tachypneic, and you see the gas consumption can be quite high as a result of that large minute volume. Um, and you see the settings here, so um, uh, the PEEPS 8, the assisted spontaneous breath or pressure supports 10, the ramp, don't worry about that, that'll just confuse you, just leave it on as default. The trigger is currently 3, um, and I'll show you, I'll go back to the simulator and I'll show you, you can actually get that lower so that it'll trigger a much lower um, uh, flow rate. Um, and Set up. Actually, I'll just go back. So you can see here we've got capnography on so I recommend you do that for all your non-invasive ventilation that just helps a number of things but um, it just uh, it uh, helps you show obviously if there's airway obstruction if the mask falls off and so forth um, but it also can uh, obviously give you an end tidal CO2 that should give you a guide about how the patient's doing with their ventilation uh, just to show another video here So you can see this patient's actually holding um, the, the the circuit there and the, the, the kind of the, the mask onto themselves. So they've just started this, the the uh, non-invasive ventilations. So I usually just get the patient to hold it just so they feel in a bit of control and they get used to it, they're used to the pressure. So that's another tip. Okay, one more. So this one, this patient um, uh, has got the mask straps on, so he's not holding, he was a bit sick of this one, um, and um, 
uh, yeah, so, so that uh, this this uh, patient um, uh, had cardiogenic pulmonary edema and rapid AF, so uh, with a non-invasive ventilation over the course of a two-hour fly, we resolved the pulmonary edema along with treating the rapid AF. Um, now I'll just go back to this simulator, I just wanted to show the trigger, so uh, so you need to turn on the pressure support, obviously. Alright, so if we turn on the pressure support. Okay. It will now give us a trigger and a slope or a ramp. Um, and the trigger, you can go down to one litre a minute, but it's automatically set on three. So you obviously can reduce the trigger if you think the patient's really struggling a fair bit and needs a bit of extra support um, um, to make it trigger um, with each breath. Uh, the, the, the slope or the ramp is uh, the way the flow of gas is delivered, um, but don't worry too much about that, just leave it on its setting. There's really only two, two modes that can be and it's, uh, uh, it's not really a big difference. And then, um, and then you away you go. So uh, once you finish, turn the device off. So that's it, folks. Um, so I think hopefully you found that useful. Um, and uh, um, yeah, give us your feedback. But Andy, I uh, hope to hear from you and um, to hear that you have a successful first. Um, uh, use of the Oxylog 3000 uh, with non-invasive ventilation. Okay, thanks guys.